Welcome, I'm Miguel Amado, and today I'm going to be talking to you about Agent Workbench. This is a brand new feature of OutSystems, it's still in early access program, uh, but we can dive in, have a little bit of a sneak peek, and let's have some fun with it. Agent Workbench is the OutSystems answer to creating agents that adapt to your needs, whether it's embedding AI decisions in your workflows, in your apps, or even putting AI, uh, making decisions with AI. Uh, let's have some fun and let's go about it. On a previous video, I have created an application uh, to talk about Postgres. It was called Amado's Rent-A-Car. And we're going to use that example but for our use case, we're going to build in an agent to help us sell in a better way to customers. First, the AI models. Let's talk a little bit about it and how you can create one. Then I'm going to show you how you can use Agent Workbench to create a new agent. And we will drill down, we'll dive into, like AI likes to say, into the nitty and greedy, the actions that come with it. And we're going to learn how we can use it, adapt it, and implement it in an application. So let's go. Let's start with the brains of the operation, the AI model. You can create a new one and select Amazon Bedrock, uh, uh, OpenAI, or even uh, your custom connection. But in our case, we already have one. If you want to configure a new one, here's a link to do it. On our documentation, you can find that it's the, the easy steps to do it. But in our case, we're going to use one we already have. It's the OpenAI 4.0. Let's go. Okay, we are at our ODC studio. I'm going to click here to create and I'm going to select an application. And don't forget that an agent is an application. There's a new option. We're going to go in. We have an icon, a name, sales little helper, and a description, sales cars. And finally, we select the brain, our OpenAI that we already talked about and we're off. The platform generates an application and in it a service section that then you can call on your application or workflows to use the agent. This service section has this agent task and in it we are going to structure our logic in four main actions. The get grounding data, the build messages, the call open AI 4.0 and the store memory. Get grounding data. This is where you give context to your agent. In here, you're going to fetch uh, out systems entities, you're going to work with Azure AI search, or add whatever logic you want, and then get the data, the information, serialize it, and pass it to the build messages so you can give context to your agent. The build messages, as the name indicates, it's where you create your message. You pass your context from the get grounding data, you add memory in, the, in case you're doing a conversation with a context and also you add your system prompts. So you indicate if your agent should act like a pirate or something like that. And this logic is built to get everything in one in messages for you to then send to the call open AI. The call open AI, it's an action that comes from having created an AI model and this has your normal things to when you're calling a model. So you can input temperature, you can input uh, when you want the model to stop. These options all have descriptions and if you want a more advanced use case, you can use them to tweak your model to answer more like you want it to. Finally, there is this store memory uh, where the information that you're inputting and the response from the AI model is going to be stored in the database so you can keep context between prompts. So, for our use case, we don't want grounding data. We just want to send a prompt to say, hey, you're a sales bot, behave like one and help us sell cars or, in this case, rent cars. And finally, to show you the difference between the having memory or not, we're going to remove the memory for now and we're going to publish. Our agent is published, we are ready to go, we can use it in a workflow or an application. In our case, we're going to use it in our uh, Amado's rental, car rental dashboard. We are going to use for the UI uh, a pattern that, it, that comes from the AI chat patterns. Uh, in my case, I, I cloned it and I customized it to be a little bit uh, prettier 
for our use case. Let's go. I have here my dashboard of my application and I want to apply the help of my agent here. So I'm going to build a chat box where the user can chat with the agent. First, let's create a chat block that we can use on our dashboard page. We are going to drag there the floating check that has been customized. And we are going to need a chat messages list so we can keep the in the UI the logic of the conversation. We are going to add here our chat messages. We have created a Boolean so we can uh, uh, control the UI with the is waiting for response. So putting the is waiting value, defining its default value. So we have something on the screen. We're going to check the events. And finally, we're going to the on send message where the magic happens. On the on send message, it's where we're going to use our agent. First, we are going to store the message on our UI list so we can have a context of the conversation. And we're going to reference our sales little helper and send that message to it. Now, we are going to define the session ID. This is a value that the agent uses to group the context of the messages. So we need to add it to the chat block and we need to pass it to the agent. Then we are going to define its default value. Finally, we are going to pick up the response and add it to our UI message list so we can show it to the user. It's going to be here, the content of the chat. It's going to be the current time. And I'm going to say that it's not the user. We put here some UI control logic using the is waiting so we can show an animation while the agent is processing the information. And finally, we need to define the initial state of the conversation. So we're going to go to the on ready. We're going to define this session ID. In this case, I'm putting the current date time, but you can, you probably should use a GUID. And this helps the agent to manage the memory for each conversation. And we just need to add a starting, a starting message, a system message. So this is false. We're going to put the current date and the message is going to be a simple hello. Um, and now just add this to our dashboard and we are good to go and to test it. Let's test it. We are now at our application. We have here our AI assistant and we're going to start by uh, doing a simple question and selecting three options for car to rents in Camas. Uh, it's going to tank a little and its response, we have here different options. We're going to select one and see if the bot maintains the context. So I'm going to select this one. And as you can see, the bot doesn't have a memory. Although we are keeping in the UI, uh, remember we removed the, the memory before uh, so we could see the difference. So let's just activate this store memory again, publish everything. Then write again a question with options. And now, when I do a segue question to tell me more information about uh, option two, you can see that the agent maintained the context and it knows more about SUVs. So pretty cool that this comes out of the box. Just in a few clicks, we've created an agent, gave it a purpose, gave it memory and add it to an application. Now we want smarter agents, so stay tuned for the next videos to see what we can do and add to this agent to make it smarter. Thank you.